This is Jupiter Today for the 9th of February, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the very dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. And today we are going to be seeing a lot of dynamics in the Jupiter system from Earth's point of view. This podcast will probably be a little bit longer, so hang in there. It's a lot of activity to report on. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day in quadrant two, heading west. Europa begins the day in quadrant four, heading east. Ganymede starts the day in quadrant two, heading west. And Callisto spends most of the day in quadrant two, also heading west. At zero hours, 30 minutes, UTC. Io goes through a perijove, which is the closest distance between it and Jupiter. It'll be in its orbit, and that's a distance of 420,009.1 kilometers. At one minute after zero hours UTC, Europa also goes through a perijove at a distance of 664,000 kilometers. 979.4 kilometers. At 6 hours UTC, EO has transited Jupiter and is now in quadrant 3 heading west. Europa is just about to be moving behind Jupiter and it's going to be going into quadrant 1 heading east. At 11.35 UTC, Ganymede goes through a perijove at a distance of 1,067,699.8 kilometers. At 12 hours UTC, EO is still in quadrant 3, heading west, but getting pretty close to its western elongation. Europa has moved behind Jupiter and is now firmly in quadrant 1, heading east the rest of the day. 1,800 hours UTC, EO is in quadrant 4, heading east, and Ganymede has now successfully transited and is in quadrant 3, heading west the rest of the day. And at 2134 UTC, EO goes through an apogee, which is the furthest distance from Jupiter, and that distance is 423,528.1 kilometers. And by zero hours UTC tomorrow, EO is just about to move behind Jupiter. Europa is very close to its eastern elongation, and Callisto is transiting Jupiter. Okay, there are 12 Jupiter satellite events today. At 2.48 UTC, EO begins its transit of Jupiter. At 2.52, the shadow of EO ingresses. At 5.06 UTC, the transit of EO ends. And at 5.09 UTC, the shadow of EO egresses. At 5.58, Europa moves into the shadow of Jupiter. And at 8.58, Europa reappears from behind Jupiter. At 12.53 UTC, Ganymede begins its transit of Jupiter. At 13.10, the shadow of Ganymede ingresses. At 16.31 UTC, the transit of Ganymede across Jupiter ends. At 16.49, the shadow of Ganymede egresses. At 20.29 UTC, the transit of Callisto begins. And at 21.12 UTC, the shadow of Callisto ingresses. And there are seven satellite mutual events. And this is the most mutual events that have occurred so far this season. The first goes from 526 UTC to 529 UTC when EO occults Europa 
This is a 3.5 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.411 magnitudes. But this event takes place pretty close to Jupiter, 7.2 arc seconds from the limb of Jupiter. A difficult one to observe and photograph. And looking on the Google Earth map, you can see the visibility of this event. This bright point in the center is the location on the Earth where Jupiter is at the zenith at the time of this event. And so you can see that all of North America and most of South America is going to be able to see this event. From 532 to 534 UTC, EO eclipses Europa. It's a 1.8 minute event with a very shallow estimated magnitude flux drop of 0 0.021 magnitudes. And these moons are still quite close, in fact a little bit closer than the last event, 6.01 arc seconds from Jupiter and 3.69 seconds apart. The visibility for this event is about the same as the previous event. The third event today from 1034 to 1040 UTC is when Ganymede is going to occult Europa. It's a 5.8 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.465 magnitudes. And that occultation takes place 28.71 arc seconds from Jupiter. And the visibility of this event is Western North America, Hawaii, it's going to be practically straight overhead, and a lot of the Western Pacific. From 1047 to 1050 UTC, Ganymede is going to eclipse Europa. That's a 3.8 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0 0.06 magnitudes. The distance between Europa and Jupiter is 31.46 arc seconds and the distance between Ganymede and Europa is 6.3 arc seconds, as seen from Earth's point of view. And the visib visibility there is pretty much the same as the previous event. These eclipses and occultations are occurring, as you can see, one right after another. At 1333 UTC until 1341, Callisto is going to eclipse Europa. It's an 8.2 minute event with a very deep estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.784 magnitudes. And it's a pretty good distance away from Jupiter, 73.49 arc seconds. And Callisto and Europa are 10.22 arc seconds apart. And the visibility for this, Western Pacific, East Asia, a lot of Australia, maybe Hawaii. The sixth mutual event today goes from 2156 to 2101 UTC, and that's when Ganymede is going to occult EO. It's a 5.4 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0 0.342 magnitudes, and the distance to Jupiter is 54. 58 arc seconds. Visibility of this, a lot of Asia, all of Europe, looks like all of Africa is going to be able to see this event. And the seventh and final mutual event today goes from 2106 to 2113 UTC and that's when Ganymede eclipses EO. It's a 7.2 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.567 magnitudes and the distance is 51.37 arc seconds from Jupiter. Okay, orbital ribbons today. So here's the connection between EO and Europa. And EO and Ganymede. EO and Callisto and then Europa and Ganymede. Nice little twist there. 
and Europa and Callisto, another little twist. And finally, Ganymede and Callisto, just a nice sheet. And I combine all those and colorize them a little bit to get that. Okay, 24 hours of Jupiter sky. So we're standing on the equator of Jupiter, just above the clouds, so we can see all the stars as we rotate around with Jupiter. We'll rotate a couple of times in 24 hours. There goes Europa into Jupiter's shadow. Again, we had just passed in front of Callisto there, and is going to be passing between the Sun and Jupiter to give us a transit and some shadows. just nice to sit back and watch this sometimes. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian three times today, the first at zero hours UTC, the next at 9.56, and the third at 19.52 UTC. There were some new images posted. There was no new radio data today and no new papers. So at zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on the celestial sphere is a right ascension of 9 hours, 19 minutes, 29.4 seconds, and a declination of positive 16 degrees, 37 minutes, 26.8 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun today as seen from Earth is 177.262 degrees. And that's 1.025 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The phase angle today is 0 0.508 degrees. And that's 0.189 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The distance between Earth and Jupiter is 650,355,439 kilometers. And that's 104,253 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. That gives a relative velocity between Jupiter and the Earth of 4,343.88 kilometers, and that's 1,969.05 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. The distance between the Sun and Jupiter today is 797,793,777 kilometers. And that's 46,311 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. That gives a relative velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,929.63 kilometers per hour. And that's 2.04 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. The central meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 100.2 degrees. CM2, 98.11 degrees. CM3, 7.23 degrees. The 
time of this recording is 0 hours 3 minutes UTC on the 9th of Jan February 2015. So please subscribe and thank you for subscribing. I'd like to hear your comments and questions and suggestions. Always trying to make this podcast better, given different perspective on the very dynamic Jupiter system. You can send those comments and any images you have to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.